वेलकम टू योर ओन चैनल ऑफ राइट फंडा हेर इज अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम फ्रिक्शन लॉज ऑफ मोशन लेट डिस्कस दिस प्रॉब्लम द क्वेश्चन से इज दैट ए यूनिफॉर्म चेन इज प्लेस्ड एट रेस्ट ऑन ए रॉप सरफेस ऑफ बेस लेंथ बी एंड हाइट एच ऑन एन इरेगुलर सरफेस एज शोन इन द फिगर द फिगर इज गिवन बिलो देन what must be the minimum coefficient of friction between the chain and the surface so that the chain remain uniform so first we'll see what are the keywords are there number one it is saying that the chain is a uniform chain this uniform chain first keyword we got second thing this is a surface this is a rough surface a rough surface and this is not having constant angle of inclination you see the irregular surface and on this surface a chain is placed what a chain uniform chain linear mass density is constant uniform chain is placed here question is asking this is a rough surface so it must be having some coefficient of friction mu what should be the, must be the minimum coefficient of this friction between the chain and the surface so that the chain won't slips down or they remain in equally free up So now, what are two dimensions are given? One is the b, the length of the base of the inclined plane, or and the height is given at h. So now you have understood the question. You may pause the video and start solving the problem. After you try this one, after that again you can resume the video and you can see the solution. I will be discussing the solution right now. So let's see what to how to solve this problem. whatever thing first we have to make a strategy how to think first thing is the how to think first then the what will happen there is a why why the first the, first of all let us discuss that why the chain will fall because there is a gravitational force is there everywhere there is a gravitational force is acting and gravitational force has some component along the incline and that will try to pull it but as it starts tending to go down there must be some force to oppose this one if it is a rough surface if it is smooth definitely it will slip down but if it is a rough surface there is a possibility of remaining in equilibrium so Then the friction force will act everywhere, but the direction of friction force is varying. So when a varying thing is there, uh, automatically one thing should come out. That we should take an elemental ele area, ele length, and this small element we should make the equilibrium condition to be set. Every small element, and we should solve this one. And it required we to integrate this one. So that should be the back of the mind, and we'll start solving this element. So what will happen? Out of this, let's consider only a small part. Consider only a small part. Only this much part. Let's small part of length d l. The total length is l. Suppose total length is l. I'll take the only very small part d l. I'll consider and the very small part d l. I'll consider out of that. Let's I say this very small part d l. So this d l part. What mass I have considered there? If I take the lambda is my mass per unit length. If lambda is my mass per unit length, this is a uniform chain, is there? So unitary method I can apply. If the lambda is the mass per unit length, then I have considered a mass small element dm that is equal to lambda into because three unit mass is lambda mass, unit length is mass, lambda mass, so dl length. Is so this much dm I have done. So let us draw the free body diagram. of this small element if i draw the free body diagram of the small element what are the forces that will be acting this is dm mass is there so here definitely one gravitational force of dm into g will be acting and this surface will apply some reaction force normal reaction force for so this small element i'll be applying normal reaction here one dmg is there a normal reaction there so this small element i take the small normalization dn And also, there will be opposing force. The friction force will be there. And let us give the name a small friction force here, Df, on this small element. Okay, these are the force friction force that will be acting. And let us this angle, the element we have considered. Element can be elemental. Element can be anywhere here. So wherever I have considered, so, so this angle is equal to theta. So this angle I have taken as the theta. But theta is not constant. Theta is very well everywhere. Okay. So wherever I have considered angle, that is equal to theta is there. So What I have to do that uh, this uh, friction force has to balance this one. We make the strategy like this. So let's resolve this in this direction along this uh, surface and perpendicular surface. In that way, let's resolve the forces. If we resolve the forces, then what diagram will be getting is like this. We got a diagram like this. So what will happen? The D F is there. So this D M, this angle is theta, and uh, so this angle will be equal to theta. 
Oh, this, this, sorry, this, this will be equal to theta. This is 90 minus theta. This angle will be equal to theta. Okay. So, this component perpendicular to surface will be equal to cos theta. It will be sin theta will be there. So, I can write this one as the dm into dmg sin theta, of course. dmg. dmg. And this will be equal to dm t cos theta. Okay, dmg sin theta and d1g cos theta. Two forces. So everything we have resolved into this. Let's write the equation of motion. So if it is equilibrium, net force has to be zero. So this force must be balancing each other. This force must be balancing each other, or the net acceleration must be equal to zero. So if I write the equations in the perpendicular to surface for this small elemental area, then elemental length, then what I write the dn is equal to dmg cos theta. In this direction, I write the dm. And we know that dm we have thought. What is dm? dm is equal to lambda dl. So, we can write dn is equal to lambda dl cos theta. Okay. So, let us call this as equation number 1. Okay. Now, similarly, in this direction, along this uh, surface also, that must be balanced. So, friction must be small friction force on the small elemental area, elemental length must be balancing the dmg sin theta. So, dm is equal to dmg sin theta or dm is equal to lambda dlg sin theta. Call this equation. If I small element by this much force is there, let us calculate the total friction force what is acting throughout the element. Throughout the element, what are the, all the small friction forces? But friction is a vector quantity, mind it. So, all the friction force together, I have to find this. So, what will happen? This total friction force is equal to lambda g sin theta. Okay. So, this is my total friction force acting on the element and the theta will take care because theta will be variable. So, in this case, what are the constant? If you see the lambda is constant and g is also constant taken outside and dl sin theta is there. Okay. So, theta is variable quantity. So, along the surface, the force will be there. Call this as equation number 3. Okay. So, we got this one, but we do not know dl. We know theta. Theta is a function of L also not given there. Theta is not constant. So, we will check how to integrate this one. Okay. But for the timing, there is a dn also there. Let us calculate the total normal direction force also at any element. Total also we can calculate. So, total normal direction force on the whole element, I can integrate the equation number 1. This is dn. We integrate equation number 1, we integrate. Then we got this one. And if I take this uh, lambda dl, const, lambda into g, constant quantity, then I got this equation. Let us call this and if it is in relying on this uh, phase and it is not sliding down, then this friction force must be static friction force. And this force must be static friction force. And now we know the static friction force and limiting value. Static force and force must be less than or equal to F max. And F max we need the mu into n. So total we can find out at element this friction force, what we have written here in question number three, must be less than mu times the n, where n mu is the coefficient of friction. So, if I take this value of f and l, this goes from equation number, equation number 3 and equation number 4, if I substitute the value of friction force and normal direction, I can write left hand side lambda g integration of dl cos theta is less than mu lambda g into integration of dl sin theta. So, if I want to cancel, then this lambda g, lambda g can. Now, question arises how to integrate. Because we don't know to integrate either have to L in terms of theta or theta in terms of L I have to write. But I don't know the functional dependence because they are given the irregular surface. No function given. If it is simple given, then I could have written. Or any particular parabolic curve given, I could have written. It is not given like this. So how to solve this one? But if I observe very, very carefully, I'll go back and see here in the small element I have considered the small element I have considered. So let me write this small element, this small chain. Small element I have considered. Let me write big letter. This is my dl length is and this is my theta is a very small element theta is here. This dl, if I this dl vector, I can resolve two components this and, and this. This angle is theta. So, what is this length is there? This is nothing but dl cos theta, and this is nothing but the dl sin theta. This one, this vertical component, this small length, uh, this vertical will be equal to dl cos sin theta, and this will be equal to dl sin theta of this dl. So, in place of dl cos theta, what I can write? This, is the, this support, this element has a coordinate of x, y. So, this is the change in the x coordinate. Every, every element of the x coordinate is there, every element of the y coordinate. This is the small element difference the x coordinate. 
and the dl sin theta is nothing but the change in the y coordinate so in place of this what i can write is the dy in place of dl sin theta and in place of dl cos theta i can write the dx but the x coordinate ka difference okay these two things we can write so if i go back and write wherever my dl cos theta dl sin theta is there in this place what i can write in place of dl cos theta i don't know the functional dependence but there's a dl cos theta equal to dx and in place of dl sin theta i can write dy and what is the dx cos theta dx integration with the dx integration with the small 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 so all this small element ka dx this small element ka dx this small element have dx this small element has corresponding dx so all this dx 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 i add i'll get the b and similarly every element has some dy so this dy again small element have the dy 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 all together i'll get h so integration of this where i've written the dl cos theta where i've written dx if i integrate dx then there will be the base length b and it is the dy the base height x so from this if i go then i can write the equation mu that the coefficient of friction should be greater than equal to b by x should be greater than b by h this is my result i obtain so what is this result is saying that mu should be equal to this greater equal to this or should be greater than this then it will be possible now i'll take a homework for this you solve yourself after you understood the method how to solve this one we extend the problem we'll extend the problem it asks in the what is the minimum coefficient of friction i'll give the problem like this write down so if suppose if mu is equal to mu minimum that you calculated by to half of this value so definitely right now it is lesser than this value it will slide down so question is asking that if the mu is not equal to this much is lesser than this much that is equal to mu not by 2 and and mass of the chain is l and length of the chain is chain is l mass of the chain is m and the length of the chain is l and it is going to uniform chain find out With what acceleration the chain will slide down? We have calculated the minimum be required. But suppose it's not the minimum is not satisfied, lesser than this value. So if mu the coefficient of friction is half of the required minimum value of coefficient of friction, then calculate the acceleration with which the chain will start sliding down if mass of the chain is m and length of the chain is l. Initial initial acceleration. You have to calculate. Calculate this one. Very easy. Calculate this value. Tell you and write in the comment box what answers you are getting. Hope you have enjoyed the solution. You apply your pro this problem and get the answers.